most compelling action is on CBS Sports. When you have the best, you expect the best. Perfect is the only way to describe some of the performances at the first World Professional Gymnastics Championship last week. A parade of tens lit up the scoreboard. Shannon Miller was crowned the best of that elite field. And now, many of her Olympic gold medal teammates join Shannon again for a second straight week of competition. It's the Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship. Today, the best of the best face off again on the CBS Sports Show. Today, the CBS Sports Show welcomes you to Rochester, Minnesota, home of the world-famous Mayo Clinic. We're just a couple of blocks away at the Mayo Civic Center, where many of the top gymnasts in the world have gathered for the Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship. Hello, everyone. I'm Andrea Joyce. Well, there hasn't been much rest for the American gymnasts who dazzled us at the Olympic Games last summer in Atlanta. Many of them spent the last several months touring the country. But last week, in Portland, Maine, at the World Professional Gymnastics Championship, it was time to get serious again about competing. Shannon Miller won that event, and she's hoping to carry over that momentum to this two-day professional competition. Also in the field here, four of Shannon's Olympic gold medal teammates and three members of the 1996 Belarus Olympic team, including one of the sport's biggest stars, Svetlana Boganskaya. Joining me now are analysts for the competition, Wendy Hilliard, former rhythmic gymnastics champion, and 1984 double Olympic gold medalist Peter Vidmar. And Peter, with that win last week, is Shannon Miller the woman to beat here in Rochester? Well, first of all, Andrea, Shannon's in great shape. She is, especially after such an incredible career, she's been able to still stay very, very competitive. She could have easily rested on her laurels. She hasn't done that. Her consistency at last week's competition allowed her to become the first world professional all-around champion. But she's not going to be alone today because her teammate, veteran Olympian Dominique Dawes, could also win this event. Dominique's also in great shape. In fact, had Dominique not fallen off the balance in that last week's event, she would have won that title. As a result, you can bet that awesome Dawson means business today. Well, we should point out there's a little less pressure here, a little bit of a different atmosphere, Wendy, but they did point out to us last week these gymnasts are still very competitive. Yes, and two more of those gymnasts that have that competitive drive, Amy Chow and Svetlana Boganskaya. Amy Chow, the Olympic silver medalist on the uneven bars from last year, is a consistent all-around performer, and she has a new floor routine this year. Now, Svetlana Boganskaya is in excellent competitive form, and she has such unique, stylized, expressive presentation, she always impresses the judges. But you're right, they've been out in front of the crowds, and although they're spending less time training in the gym, as a result, they've greatly improved their performance quality, yet they've maintained the high level of technical skills they'll need for this competition. Let's tell you how this event works. It's a two-day competition with six rotations. The gymnasts with the top six scores advance to a semifinal beam off. At that point, all the scores are zeroed out. The top four from beam advance to the finals. Again, the scores are zeroed out for what you might call the final floor. The gymnast with the highest score on the floor becomes the women's professional gymnastics champion. Here's the rotation order for today. The women will compete first on vault, then on bars, beam, and floor. And the competition order for this first rotation, Elena Piscoon will start things off. Piscoon, 19 years old, born in Bobrus, Belarus. She's the 1993 world champion on vault. And Andrea, they're going to be doing two vaults and we'll take the best score. We're going to start with the Yurchenko full. And a nice, nice ball. This competition will be using modified NCAA rules. The difference from Olympic competition being either the value or number of required elements for each event. A nice approach to the horse. Very good, full twisting Yurchenko. Just a little hot backwards, but she'll score very well. Looking at her body position, she has good form. Her legs and feet are extended and together. Nice landing. The value of this vault, the Yurchenko Full, is worth a 
Elena finished only in sixth place last week in Portland, Maine, but we were very impressed with her consistency. She's a solid gymnast. And the score for Elena Piscoon. Nice way to start nine for Piscoon, a 9.725 for her first ball. For Elena's second belt, she'll be doing a Yurchenko with a half twist, which is worth a 10.0. She has the same approach onto the board with a round off. She punches up. <laughs> wow, what a great ball. Landing frontwards is much more difficult than landing backwards because she cannot see the ground until it hits her. We'll take another look here. As she does the half turn, she's flipping forwards, and she can't really spot the ground. As a result, she has to kind of guess where it is. But after doing it enough, she knows certainly where the ground is on that one. And it's a 9.90 for Elena Piscoon. Nice start. Next Up next, Alona Palaskova. Teammate of Piscoon. She was not part of this competition last week. So she has a handspring front with tight, really nice position. She's a very nice tight type, but she took a little hop on the ending. She doesn't look too happy with that one. And Pola Skova's got a perfect angle at which she hits the horse. Watch when her hands impact the horse. That driving of the heels upward allows her to get a great rotation when she comes around to land. It's just right on for a perfect landing. Little hop, but nicely done. Palaskova scores a 9.80. Palaskova, one of the younger competitors here, 17 years old. You can see she's gaining a lot of speed here. Runway is about 80 feet. Same vault, more distance, but her half went over to the side. This this vault ranks at a 10. The start value is a 10, so you see she wasn't too happy with that one either. She certainly got more distance on this vault, though. The distance from the horse to the mat where she lands, that is very, very important, how far they go. But uh, she took a little hop forward and off to the side, as Wendy said. You can see that on this overhead view. And so she'll lose just a little bit. And the second ball for Polaskova scores a 9.75. Here's Amanda Borden, captain of last year's gold medal team. Six years on the national team from Cincinnati, Ohio. Amanda's going to be going for a hamstring front tuck, which has a 9.9 .9 start value. And she just took one extra step. Not a bad ball. Her coach, Mary Lee Tracy. Good run. Not as hard to do it tough. Pike is a little bit harder. So she'll take that step. So she'll probably lose at least a couple tenths. Be difficult for her to score as high. And Borden scores a 9.65. For the second ball, I think she's really going to try and control that landing just a little bit more. She doesn't want to get any extra tents taken off. Same ball getting the speed. Handspring front tuck. Much better landing. Just a small hop. This is the luxury of doing two vaults. She has a chance to really go all out on the vault. 
Her legs are more together. She knows that she's going to get a good score under her belt with a 9.65. So by going all out here and really zeroing in on the landing, she can get a higher score. And And just a little better on the second ball to 9.675. Still to come on vault, America's most decorated gymnast, the incomparable Shannon Miller. Professional gymnastics championship. Time to welcome the fourth member of our broadcast team, Michelle Tafoya. Well, Amanda Borden certainly had some improvement between her first and second vault. What'd you do out there? Um, I just went down there and tried to basically hit the first vault, and then for the second vault, I went down and was really focused on the landing. And were you happy with it? I was very happy, yes. This has been a lot more fun for you guys to be competing against each other on this professional tour, a little bit more low stress. How's it been? Um, it's definitely been a lot of fun. Everybody's out there just to have fun and do their best. And we're all cheering for each other, and we want everybody else to do the best. And whoever wins just happens to win. Good luck. Thank you very much. Set to vault now, Amy Chow. 18 years old from San Jose, California. This vault is a fun hamstring pipe with a half twist. Great vault. You know, she twists a little bit weird near Peter. It looks a little bit like a square vault. Yeah, she, she twists a little bit soon, and then as she pikes and twists in the pike, it looks a little bit awkward, but she knows where the ground is, and you can see that on the vault. Gets her body around. Good landing. A little straddle on the pre-flight, as you can see, her legs came apart just a bit. She'll lose a little bit there, and a little bit then on that hop. And the first ball for Amy Chow scores a 9.825. Amy won the gold on vault at the Pan Am Games in 1995. Amy is a very consistent all-around performer. She's good with the vault. This vault has a start value of 10. She's going to go one more time. And a much better landing, much better control. Amy could have a little bit more power on this vault, but she has a good feel for what it takes to land it. Not much to deduct here. Just a little bit of a straddle on the legs, as you can see in the pre-flight right there. Other than that, it's a very nicely done vault. She'll score very well. And the second vault, 9.90 for Amy Chow. Here's Svetlana Boganskaya. Three-time Olympian, competed in 88, 92, and 96, won the gold medal on vault in 1988. Another great Yushchenko half-turn vault. Very difficult to land. She's very excited about that. Now you can see how powerful is. She's starting with the round off going right to the back handspring, and because she has to turn half and land front, which she does, great. That makes it that much more difficult. It is worth a 10. Here's another look. You can see her body position. Legs nice and tight together, and a great landing. Best vault of the day so far. And the, score and the highest the score on vault so Nine. far, 9.975. Well, tell me if that doesn't take the pressure off for the next vault. So impressive. This is a career that spanned three Olympic Games, and you, we talk so much about gymnastics for women as a young person's sport, but she's 24 years old. And she still knocked out two great vaults. The same vault, worth a 10. It's going to be hard to beat that one. I think that was better than the first one. Let's see what the judges say. another look it's like a textbook here she's going for the round off onto the horse and look at the body position very straight and she just lands it and it's so tough to land the front landing vault here she is again you can see the position here of her legs nice and tight and she just rocks that landing and the score for Boganskaya a 10 
Jordan Miller up now to vault. 20 years old, she has more Olympic and World Championship medals than any American gymnast in history. Now Shannon is also trying the Ukrankle with a half twist. Let's see her landing. One step. Gonna have to take off for that, but not a bad ball. She's gonna try and grab that step. She had quite a bit of power going into it. As a result, it caused her just to over-rotate a little bit. Very quick vault, a lot of power, just rotated a little bit too much. You can see her, her body form is nice and straight. She's zeroing in on the landing, but her shoulders are too far forward, and she had to take that extra step. And it's a 9.875 for Shannon Miller's first vault. Now, Shannon never looks worried. She's always in control. <laughs> yeah, always has that look. Even knowing that the, that uh, Volgenskaya skirt is in right before, just nice and cool and calm. Ooh, nice ball. That's why. Right, very nice. She just had that small step on the way back. She really corrected herself. Yeah. Instead of over rotating, she just checked it a little bit. Very solid. Kind of overcorrected a little bit on the ball this time, but it's got good lift off of it, nice and crisp. Won't be the 10, though. Took that step. Let's take another look. It really started off great. Good position, good push off the horse, and then she was just sitting back a little bit too much. She tried to shake it a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> bring those legs yeah. together and cover it up. Land a little ballet fist position there. And Miller scores a 9.90 second ball. Two competitors remain in the first rotation when we come back the explosive Dominique Dawes. Tomorrow on the CBS Sports Show, the conclusion of the Women's Professional Gymnastic Championship at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Dominique Dawes ready to vault. Another two-time Olympian a three-time national champion on vault. And she wastes no time gaining speed. She's going for a handspring front pike. And a very good vault. Nice position, just one easy dinky little hop. I'll tell you, the girls really have a standard to go against now. After Boganskaya sticks her landing, everybody needs to go for that stick. Right. Try to get that 10. Just over a little bit too much. You can see that power there. Very nice position in the air, but she couldn't control the landing. That's a 9.875 for Dominique Dawes. Now this vault has a start value of 10. So she does everything just right. She can get up there. And that was up there. <laughs> this can work out well for her score because the judges have no choice but to give that a higher score. And they didn't have a lot of room to move up. Exactly. So it could be the 10. Nice tree pipe. Legs are just right together. Perfect landing, got great distance from the horse. Look at her form again. Second ball for Dawes, a 9.95. I don't know about that one. I think that was almost a 10. That was very, very good ball, though. Here's Dominique Mochianu. Everyone fell in love with this youngster in Atlanta. The youngest member of the gold medal team. And already planning for Sydney. Look at that. You can't go full push, little hop on the landing. But she's in full training right now. 
Now this vault has a start value of 9.9 because it's a little easier to land than the half twist. And you can see right there, she's a little bit off to the side. And here we're taking another look to see her position. You see she's going a little bit off center, but it was still a very complete, complete vault and just one little hop. Mociano with a 9.75. Dominique stunned the gymnastics world in 1995 when she became the youngest U.S. national champion in history. She was just 13 years old. Dominique's going to repeat the Uchenko vault, starting with the round-off approach. Back hands on onto the horse. Oh, much better vault. A little hop in the landing, but she had more control in the landing. There's a reason why this vault is easier to, to land when she does the full twist and not the half twist. The reason why this vault is easier with the full twist is that when she gets upside down right there, she can see the ground. She can look right down there on the ground and zero in for the landing. It's easier than the half turn where it's blind all the way till the end. And it'll be a 9.80 for Mochianu. So here are the standings now after one rotation. Remember, it's most important to stay in the top six. Boganskaya in first place right now with that perfect 10 on vault. The gymnasts will compete in four rotations today. Let's head over to Michelle Tafoya standing by with the leader. A 10 on the vault for Svetlana Boganskaya. It was beautiful. How surprised were you by the score? Well, actually, I tried to do everything what I could and... The two times I stick it, two times, and it was like pleasant surprise for me. I was really happy. How are you enjoying this competition with people from Belarus and also the best competitors from the United States? Well, it's wonderful, and it's uh, so much fun to just go and do your thing and just to be around the famous people, you know, and they are my friends, actually. And you're just as famous. Good luck. Thanks. When we come back, you'll see Amy Chow in her best event as the gymnasts move to the uneven bars after this message and a word from your local station. We are back at the Mayo Civic Center in Rochester, Minnesota for the Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship. After one rotation, Svetlana Boganskaya is on top of the leaderboard, followed by Dominique Dawes. Amanda Borden in eighth place will have to pick up some ground, maybe in this next rotation. The competition order on the uneven bars, Alona Poliskova from Belarus will start things off. Poliskova, a solid all-around gymnast, 13th in the all-around world championships in 1994 when she was just 14 years old. For this competition on the uneven bars, the gymnasts must perform at least two release moves and work both the high and the low bar, although all the action occurs on the high bar. Here's her ginger. Now she's getting down to the low bar just for a second. Doing giants into her dismount, layout, double layout. Ah, those three sets though are going to cost her too much power. Not happy with her dismount, but boy, the routine was a very good performance. Her release moves are way up there. Here's her ganger, flowy half turn, nice and high, very extended on the catch. She's a very aggressive performer. Just over-rotates too much in this dismount. Gets a nice whip on the double layout, but brings her hips in too much, has to take those steps back. Alona just getting her feet wet in this competition. The only gymnast in the field here who did not compete last week in Portland. And Alona Poliskova scores a 9.65. next, Amanda Borden. Since the Olympics, Amanda has enjoyed having opportunities like this to let people across the country get to know the gymnasts a little better. I think what's different about this than a normal competition is that you're going to see a lot of people's personalities here, whereas at a normal competition, everybody's so focused and intense, and a lot of people get the impression that we're not happy, and that's definitely not the case. But I think a lot of people are going to see, you know, what we're really like and that we love doing in gymnastics. 
and there is no question about that. These gymnasts have been having a great time out here. Amanda finished eighth last week in Portland, but didn't perform badly there. No, there were just some spectacular routines throughout the entire event, and uh, she just wasn't quite up to uh, speed with some of the top performers there. Getting ready for her release. Jaeger Salto, front flip, back over the bar. Uneven bars has turned into an event that's so much similar now to the men's horizontal bar because the skills they do are so similar to that. Look at the giants, the reverse hex. Rarely do they ever go to the low bar other than to really fulfill the requirements to touch the low bar. There's her front off with a half turn dismount. A little deduction on the landing, but this score fairly well in this routine. Amanda is used to having to uh, start off the team and be very consistent. And, uh, her role was very critical to the team victory in Atlanta. Going up first is so important, or in the first few groups, it sets the stage for the rest of the scores. Those are nice. Jaeger Salto, back down to the low bar. And here's her second release. It's a reverse hex or Picacha over the high bar. She just keeps everything moving. She's preparing for a dismount. This is where she gets a bit of a deduction. Toe on front half, takes that little hop forward. But not a bad routine. And Amanda Borden will pick up some steam here in the second rotation, a 9.80. Here's Amy Chow. This is her best event. She won the silver on bars in Atlanta. She even has a couple of moves named after her. And Amy Chow is really one of the best in the world on this, no doubt. And unlike the other gymnasts, she does great work on the low bar. Yeah, she absolutely. She keeps on going to stall the work. And it's so innovative. Her routine is just so much more creative. It's not what we call a stock routine. Beautiful work and movement. And front pipe, really difficult move. She does the front through to the low bar. And the rhythm that she has, she just keeps everything moving. Very creative routine and tremendous angles. Her handstands are always on top. Nice body angle. Good dismount. Didn't do the dismount she used in Atlanta. She adds another twist to that when she's at her best, but that was still very nicely done. That's actually easy for her. They pull in back out this one up the, up the end even. We saw her with her coach, Mark Young. They've been together 15 years. There's her nice front pike done very well. Gets enough momentum to just take her back to that low bar. And this dismount's easy for her. <laughs> Although it's hard for almost everybody else. A full in, back out. She can do that with one more twist. And that's a lot to get around before you do the dismount. Yeah. <laughs> Judges like it. It's a 9.95 for Amy Chow. Dominique Dawes, they call her Awesome Dawson, still to come on the uneven bars. Here's Svetlana Boganskaya. She's only been living in the U.S. for a couple of years, but she's fit in quite nicely. When I came to this country, it was different for me to adjust because I didn't speak the language. Uh, I didn't know anything about the culture. I read, but I didn't know how it would be. And now I feel, I mean, I feel like it's my own country where I, used, I was born. Just American people, American, you know, just system, and I just love it. And she's certainly feeling comfortable at this competition. Boganskaya coming off a perfect 10 on the vault. We'll see if she can keep the momentum. And boy, look at the look of her face. She meant business here. She wants to do a, a great routine and maintain that lead she has. Nice full turn over the bar. Good Picacho. She has such great line. Everything is extended right through the toe point. And she's tall for most gymnasts, so it's a little bit more difficult for her to work bars. Setting up for her dismount, double layout, a little bit low, so we take those two steps. But the overall routine is very good. Yeah, it's a hard dismount for her to land. A double layout with her body stretched out like that is very difficult on the even bars, especially for someone that is really taller than most other gymnasts. And she's setting up for her release move. Reverse hex over the bar. Gets right back up. 
And here's the dismount position. You can see it from the side view. She's going to do two layout positions, good body position, and her shoulders just a little bit low. She couldn't hold on to the landing, had to take that big step. Logan Skaya scores a 9.725. And that will drop her out of the lead. Amy Chow moves into first place. Up next, Shannon Miller. One of the five medals she won in Barcelona in 92, a bronze on the uneven bars. Shannon really doesn't have a, a bad event, <laughs> and she works by so well. A nice full twisting action, right into her finger. Another release coming up. Great pulls over the bar. Right into a reverse head. Doing that requirement, getting on that low bar. And up, oh, she's back on the high bar again. <laughs> <laughs> so on front with a half twist. Just kicked it out. Yeah. Nice landing. Very awesome. nice. A little simpler discount than she's used to doing. But she can play it safe here and get a good score, and she'll get one. <laughs> Here's a reverse hat for Tatachev, named after the Soviet gymnast that did it first. A male gymnast, in fact, that did it on the high bar. Setting up her dismount. Just a toe on front with a half, but she does it very well. Kicks it out to a perfect landing. And the score, and the score for Miller, a 9.85. bar. Nice free hip shooting up for the high bar. Kind of a blind skill. You want to hope that the bar is there when you reach for it. <laughs> nice one and a half turn on the top of that giant. Now that I think was a bit of a cover up. I think she intended to go back to the other side and yet she's been able to kind of keep her momentum and keep on going. Let's see how the judges treat that. Double touch. I think she got a little bit flustered on that. Yeah, Drop made a little change up. there and then uh, really redesigned her, her dismount also. But that's also the sign of an experienced gymnast to be able to, uh, to, to keep it all together and, and keep a rhythm going. Let's see what happens here. There's the giant, full turn, one and a half. Comes down to the low bar and went over. But she was smart enough to keep with it, do the half turn on the kip, and get back into a rhythm. The dismount, just a simple double tuck. I don't think she planned for there, but she's very smart, as you said. Got through the whole routine and stayed on. So Dawes scores a 9.825, and that will allow her to move up to second place, passing Svetlana Boganskaya. Coming up, the second rotation continues. 15-year-old sensation Dominique Mochianu back in a moment. To crown a champion as the Women's Professional Gymnastic Championship concludes here in Rochester, Minnesota at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Dominique Mochianu. This is not one of her strongest events. But she has been training very hard, getting ready for U.S. Nationals in August in Denver, Colorado. And she just finished her reverse heck, which was really quite low. And then she just did a ginger, but she's keeping her moving. But she had a check there. You saw when she went to low bar, her toes hit the floor. The deduction there. She's preparing for her dismount. Double layout. Switch that one around. Nice dismount. But she had some problems there in her work on the low bar. That's Dominique's new coach, Mihai Breston. She has a nice release. Here's a nice high ganger. She gets plenty of power over the low bar, but she just couldn't get her toes in front of her on that glide kit. So she had to bend her legs to get her feet back in front. Her dismount's done very well. It's a nice double layout. It gets a good whip. Body's nice and straight. 
good landing. Too bad for the form break, though. Dominique currently training up in Boston. She's a 10th grader, studies through correspondence classes. And Mochianu scores a 9.675. Last up on bars, Elena Piscoon from Brobrus, Belarus. Last year, she won the gold medal at the World Championships on the uneven bars. And you can see right here, Elena's not even wearing handguards, which is unusual. There's your giant full pirouette over the top. Another one, a hot pirouette. And look at that super high del chest. So dynamic. Getting ready for a very quick double layout. Oh, too bad she's a little hot, because this is still going to score very, very well. She's so aggressive. She's very aggressive, and she has great speed in all of her work. And when she starts, she just keeps on going. <laughs> just makes it look easy. Now we'll take a look at this release move. It's called a Delchev. Watch this. Just booms it way up there, comes back around, catches the bar, just with enough distance so she can get that swing over the low bar. And here we get a really tight look at the handwork she has here. She's doing the pirouettes over the bar. Hot pirouette, just excellent position there. And there's a release, and look how much time she has. Just grabs it and keeps going. And no leather hand guards. <laughs> Nice double layout, just whips it around. Little leg separation on one of the layouts, but very clean routine. And the score for Piscoon on bars, 9.90. And that will move her into second place. So after two rotations, Amy Chow has moved into first place. Mochianu and Borden hovering on the bubble. Let's check in now with Michelle Tafoya. With Shannon Miller, who had an absolutely sensational performance at the last competition last week, how do you feel so far this weekend? Um, so far, everything's been going great. Um, I think I'm pretty prepared for this competition and hope to do well in the rest of it. We understand you've been in finals all week coming into this. <laughs> yeah, I studied day and night right after the last competition, took finals, and now I'm back here. <laughs> Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Shannon just completed a semester at the University of Oklahoma, so she's taking on a new form of pressure in her life. And still to come, the golden lives of the Olympic Golden Girls after this message and a word from your local station. Since the 1996 Olympics, and during that time, the American gymnasts have become very close friends, touring the country, traveling city to city by bus. At the base of their bond is the unforgettable experience of winning the team gold in Atlanta. It was one of the most amazing things that I've ever been through. I kept saying, wow, can you guys believe this? Pretty amazing. There was lots of team spirit, and we all cheered for each other, and the crowd was behind us. I think that that's a night to remember for everybody in the United States. For these members of the 96 United States Women's Olympic Gymnastics Team, winning the gold medal in the team competition brought a change to their lives overnight. Going to the Olympics opens a lot of doors, but winning an Olympic gold medal opens a ton of doors. Um, I've gotten to do a lot of wonderful things and meet a lot of different people. And um, I know that if I wouldn't have made the team, I know I wouldn't be here today. So it's, it's definitely good, giving me a lot of opportunity. It feels good when I'm walking down the street in New York and people are like, hey, is that Dominique Dawes? And I turn around and smile at them. So I was on tour for probably um, three or four months with the rest of the team. And we had a bunch of... show was a lot of fun it was kind of different um, we just kind of went on flipped onto the stage waved and basically ran off Borden and her buddies have literally been running non-stop as part of a national tour of Olympic medalists the 
Watching Amanda Borden's path has allowed her to do some television commentating for Even CBS. Athletes perform tremendous tumbling skills as well as dancing and performing, which are two of my favorite parts about gymnastics. The celebrity trail for Dominique Dawes led to a guest shot in a music video with the artist formerly known as Prince. Dominique also began an acting career and is currently appearing on Broadway in Greece. And with stardom comes imitation, as Shannon Miller found out. And not only have these gymnasts had fun with their careers as celebrities, but they've also welcomed the responsibility that goes along with being in the public spotlight. A lot of people will notice who I am and come up to me and stuff. And I think that's really neat how I have an influence on people and how, you know, a lot of people look up to me as well as little kids in gymnastics. And I'm, you know, really happy that I become a role model that they look up to. And it's really interesting to see how they all want to be like, you know, another gymnast out there. And it's really great. And the audiences at these professional competitions have been filled with young girls who dream about being the next Dominique Mochianu or Shannon Miller or Dominique Dawes. Stay with us. The gymnasts compete on the beam when the CBS Sports Show continues in a moment. gymnastics championship, Svetlana Boganskaya started out perfectly, nailing a 10 on the vault. Dominique Dawes placed herself close behind, scoring a 9.95. But in the second rotation, Amy Chow took the lead with a near-flawless performance on the uneven bars. And a solid routine from Elena Piscoon allowed her to elbow her way into second place overall. at the Mayo Civic Center for the Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship. I'm Andrea Joyce, along with Wendy Hilliard and Peter Vidmar, as here this competition got off to a very exciting start at 10 from Svetlana Boganskaya on the vault in the first rotation. I'll tell you, the top five are so close right now, and yet don't count out the veterans. Boganskaya scores a 10. You've got great performances from Dominique Dawes, Shannon Miller, so we'll see what happens in the next two events. It's going to be pretty close. Once again, we should remind you that only the top six gymnasts, though, advance to the semifinals, so what does that mean for gymnasts like Amanda Borden and Dominique Mociano they're kind of sitting there in that sixth position well you're going to see in the next two events the balance beam on the floor they're just going to have to really upgrade it they're going to have to be very consistent but as we've seen in the other competitions the beam can be the great equalizer one fall will really determine it so if everyone stays on the beam they're just going to have to upstep everything so we're halfway through the first day's competition Amy Chow on top of the leaderboard Elena Piscoon moved up to second place let's head over now to Michelle Tafoya a great competition for Dominique Dawes last week. The only thing that kept you from winning it was a small slip on the beam. How will that affect how you approach this weekend's competition? Well, going into this weekend, I want to uh, go the same way that I did last weekend, and positive, and just think more mentally tough, because beam is definitely one of my best events, and I want to show the crowd that, especially since I'm not doing any of my harder tricks. Between last weekend and this weekend, you've had the whole week to do other things. What have you done? Well, I've been performing on Broadway in the musical Grease. It's a lot of fun doing PR for Greece and fitting in training at Chelsea Piers in New York. Sounds like fun. Good luck. Thank you very much. Getting set now for the third rotation on beam. It'll be Amanda Borden starting things off, followed by Amy Chow. Amanda won the gold at the 1995 Pan Am Games in this event. Remember the beam, 16 feet long, 4 inches wide, and 4 feet off the ground. You see a lot of requirements like she has here for Astro Series. Back handspring, back handspring, oh, back boy. off the beam, which isn't part of the requirement. 5 tenths reduction for falling off the beam. Once again, Amanda tied for six coming into this rotation. The top six gymnasts advance 
so that will hurt her quite a bit. Well, I think this shows that the team is really the make or break event in so many competitions, and this could be the one that costs her from making it to the top six. During the warm-up, she wasn't having any trouble with her back series, but the front, which she made with no problem, so <laughs> you just never know. Well, sometimes that happens because they're concentrating so much on the one that they had problems with the warm-up that they tend to neglect the other ones, but um, that was just a weird one. She really got off right from the start. You could see that she was veering off to the left and just didn't make it. Well, she's preparing for a dismount. Let's go round off. Double back tuck. One big step. right here she gets off to the left really right from the start right there just way off and she just knew that there was no way to stay on that beam momentum is everything on a skill like this and that little momentum that took her off to the left just kept multiplying and multiplying until she had no choice but to jump off and amanda borden scores a 9.25 on the beam Here's Amy Chow. She did not have an easy road to the 1996 Olympics, had to overcome a disaster on beam at the trials to make the team. And had she not gotten back up and finished, she would not have made the team. When you say determined gymnast, that's Amy Chow. I mean, she almost fell out, hit her head, just kept going. She had to make the team and finish that series quite well series back handstand layout but the thing on is when the pressure came together she really hung on I mean, she has her back handspring quarter turn down to the beam well, had to check that swing through back layout Let's not forget that in last week's World Professional Gymnastics Championship, she only lost to Shannon Miller by 25 one thousandths of a point. So she's been in the hunt in these events, and she's been very consistent. Kind of quietly sneaks up on the competition. And yet she's deceivingly strong and powerful, too. Doesn't have huge muscular development like some gymnasts do, but she's very, very compact, very, very strong. And she just consistently goes through her whole routine to make sure she hits all of her requirements, completes all of her moves. A dismount, double twist, nicely done. Amy got involved in gymnastics by default. Her mom tried to enroll her in ballet when she was three, but nobody would take her, so she signed up for gymnastics. Here we are swinging through to a back layout. See how she swings the leg through, and she just had to check herself. Her hips are just a little off. Small deduction there. Now here's her dismount. She's going to take it from a round off and pull two twists around. Look for the floor. Nice landing. The score for Amy Chow. And it's a 9.85 for Amy Chow. Still to come, one of the sport's most elegant performers, Svetlana Boganskaya. Join us tomorrow for the final day of competition at the Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship, the CBS Sports Show at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Here's Svetlana Boganskaya. As we mentioned earlier, she is the oldest of the competitors, but she has used her age to her advantage. I don't feel like I'm the oldest one. I feel at the same level there and it's the same age there. You know, like Dominique is 15 and I'm 24, nine years different. But I don't feel this different because when you're around the people who is the young, is, I mean, you feel young. Next on the beam, Svetlana and here in Boganskaya. Rochester, Svetlana Boganskaya has looked anything but old. Her routines are fresh, and she looks as interested as ever out there. 
and talk about deliberate. Look at all of her motions. She knows exactly what she's doing in every scale. Just attacks it. Enhancing back layout. And the thing is, Svetlana really knows her gymnastics quite well. That's why she's been able to sustain for so long. She knows which moves are consistent for her, and she knows what looks good. Yes, she does. She really performs to more than the judges. The crowd really likes to watch her really go through these movements. Front tuck, nice technique, very solid. Looks like her feet are glued to the beam. Gymnasts wish they could glue their feet to the beam. <laughs> to the beam. Look at that extension, right to the back, walk over down to the beam. A little Svetlana style there on the bottom of the beam. Full turn, climb in every athlete's routine on the balance beam. Now she worked this double back this time many, many times in warm-up. Let's see what happens here. And the hard work paid off. Look at that. <laughs> Perfect landing. This could stick her back up on top. That was a great routine. her mount you can see how she's concentrating front flip onto the beam and then she actually adds a little wolf jump to, for a combination from the overhead shot you can see from the handstand she's going to go back back handspring back layout and here she goes for her dismount she was a little bit off to the side i think she was very surprised that she pulled it off can't do much better than this. It's a 9.975 for Bovenskaya. Vetlana bounces back to the top of the leaderboard in a tie now for first with Amy Chow. Here's Shannon Miller. She won the gold medal in Atlanta on beam, the silver in Barcelona. This will be interesting to see how she handles this because on the vault, Boganskaya scored a 10 right before Shannon went up. And here, Boganskaya gets a tremendous score. And so she knows she's got her work cut out for her to be right up there with her. So far, Shannon's right on. difficult actually than Svetlana series. And here she's setting up for her infamous Miller. And she hit it. Had a little trouble in the, yeah. the warm-up, but she hit that solid. She struggled in the warm-up here, but doesn't win it counts. It's going to be very important. Tuck double. Oh, a little step forward. Ah, oh, too bad. The Miller is a backhand swing with a three-quarter turn as opposed to a quarter turn. And that's why it's the Miller. Only she does it. Round off, double tuck, shoulders just a little too low so you take that big step. And the judges award Shannon Miller a 9.85. So Miller is currently in third place, just a tenth of a point behind the leaders, Chow and Bogenskaya. Dominique
Shaw is up next, a three-time national champion on beam, but this was her downfall last week at the World Professional Gymnastics Championship. Well, the front summy is usually a consistent element for Dominique, but with her shoulders too far over to the left, there's no way to stay on. Dominique was in first place in Portland when she fell off the beam, and that ultimately cost her the title. I'm sure she's determined not to make the same mistake she made last week. Let's see if it affects her. She could throw three of those <laughs> on the beam that she doesn't need to do it here. She just wants to be very consistent. Now, the skill that she made the mistake on last week was her front flip. Coming up here. No problem today. She mentioned that she had been training very well on beam, and so she was upset when she had the mistake, so she's determined not to do it again. Now she goes for her dismount from a series of back handsprings to double tuck. Ah, one big step onto the back. Oh, too bad. Reduction on the double back, but boy, nice, nice sequence. The back handspring into the double back is so powerful. And Peter, you mentioned her determined look. This is one gymnast who has not lost her competitive edge. Backstage, she is all business. Here's your back handspring sequence into the two layouts. The back handspring, back layout, step out, into another back layout, step out. Just right on. Here's that front flip that she fell on last week, and she was just right on this time. Dismounts a double back from the back hand springs, over rotates a little bit too much, and has to take that big step backwards. And the score for Dawes is a 9.85. with more of the Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship after this message and a word from your local station. Rochester, Minnesota, Dominique Mochianu getting set to mount the beam. And Wendy, she has a very unusual start to this routine. The other gymnasts usually mount with a front somersault. You can see Dominique here doing this turning series. It's a very innovative and interesting move. And see, the judges really do reward you for having creativity in the choreography of the routine. And remember, in all of these routines, besides the tumbling series, which we're going to see coming up, you have to have your turns and your leaps and also your combinations. Back hand swings, two layouts, very clean. Wolf jump, punch front, nice combination. She's very solid on beam, this, this uh, competition. Round up layout. Peter, she is right yeah, on. She's right really second. back in focus right now. Luciano needs a high score in this rotation to kind of get herself off the bubble. If she keeps working being like this, she'll be really up there. Just has to hit this dismount. Round up, tuck double, and she did. Just one half, nice routine. At the 1995 World Championships, Dominique won the silver on the beam, the only American gymnast to win an individual medal at that competition. Here's her back handspring combination, two layouts in a row. No problem for her. In a way, she's holding back because she can actually do much more than this. Here's her double tuck dismount. Takes that hop backwards, which is too bad because 
he really lost about a tenth of a point there and could have scored extremely high. And the judges award Mochianu with a 9.80. Here's Elena Pistoon. Elena is the European bronze medalist on beam. Elena starts off with a very solid front tuck mount. And throughout her routine, she has some very difficult single pushing elements. Here we have a full pushing back handspring. Really innovative move. on the full turn there. Now watch this combination. Back handspring, full twist on the beam. That is so difficult. <laughs> That's amazing. Interesting because she doesn't quite have that same, almost a sultry style that Boganskaya has, but she's such a tremendous athlete that she makes up for it with such great gymnastic skills. And she really attacks all those skills also. Check that little jump there. Her level of difficulty, her level of difficulty is always right up there. She's going for her dismount. Tight double, over rotate to take a couple of little steps. But overall routine, action has to difficulty. back to Olga Corbett standing back flip on the beam in the 72 Munich games. It was very controversial because the judges really hadn't seen something like that before. Some wanted to ban the skill. It's amazing what gymnasts are doing now. Look at this. It's a back handspring, back flip with a full twist on the beam. It's an absolutely amazing skill. You wonder where they're going to go in the future. And you can see her dismount here. She's doing it in the pipe position. Just pulls it around, but a little bit too much, and took two steps. And for Pistoon, it's a 9.75. Yeah. Last up on beam, Alona Poloskova. <laughs> she, like her teammate, Elena Pistoon, has... A past beam routine, a little difficulty, and nice loop series there. Here's your combination. Full twist down to the beam. Thought the other one was difficult. That one can wait. <laughs> Interesting technique into the full turn. Very nice. A little jump before the front coming made it that much more difficult. It also gave her requirements for a combination element. Once again, we have another, another young gymnast who hasn't really acquired that crowd-pleasing style that you'd see in the Boganskaya, but still a great athlete nonetheless. Nice double pike, just a step forward. What a solid performance. Poliskova getting support from her 96 Olympic teammates, Svetlana Boganskaya and Elena Piskun. She and Piskun were roommates for a time. Elena has been by her side after all the performances. She's doing a front tuck. Little shaky on there. And here you have her back handspring, full twist down to the beam. That's a lot of action in two elements. And the score for Poloskova, 9.775. And here's 
That's how things stand now after three rotations. Svetlana Boganskaya and Amy Chow up on top. Dominique Mochianu in sixth place. Let's head over now to Michelle Tafoya. With Dominique Mochiano, this is an interesting competition because really, for the first day, you only have to worry about staying in that top group of performers. Yeah, this is a different competition. It's You have to stay up there at the top, but it's still, you go up there and have fun and enjoy yourself because there's still another day of competition and you just have fun. Speaking of having fun, this summer you're looking forward to taking that driver's test and finally getting some freedom with a driver's license. Yep, I'm very looking forward to that. Um, I'm really excited. In, in the summer, I'm going to tar start taking my lessons, and soon I'll get my license, so that'll be a lot of fun. Good luck. Thanks. Well, she may have an Olympic gold medal, but Dominique Mochiano, just like any other 15-year-old, a high priority of getting a driver's license. Coming up, Shannon Miller on the floor. Back in Rochester, Minnesota at the Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship with one rotation remaining on this first day of the competition. Svetlana Boganskaya, Amy Chow up at the top of the leaderboard, but look how close the scores are. Mochiano in the sixth position. Remember, the top six advance to the semifinals. The competition order on the floor exercise. Amy Chow will go first in a good position for Mochiano and Piscoon as those scores will go up down the order. Here's Amy Chow. Amy's been quietly going about her business, staying in the lead. And this is a new floor routine for Amy this year. A little bit more upbeat. We talked about how quiet and shy Amy Chow is. She's been trying to extend her personality more, adding a little more pizzazz in her floor routine. There's a front through to a layout triple twist. Very impressive. She's having more fun in her routine, but she's also doing great tumbling. People assume that these gymnasts spend so much time in the gym, they don't do anything else. Well, you might be interested to know that Amy Chow is a 4.0 student in high school, and she's also an accomplished pianist. pass round off into a whip back backhand springs backhand springs and then a full in in a pike position one step back but a nice first pass second pass is a front flip step out watch this a layout with three twists there's one two three looks even fast in slow motion and the score for Amy Chow on the floor 9.875 Next, Svetlana Boganskaya. She won the silver on the floor in the 88 Olympics. A world champion on the floor in 1989. Amazing longevity. And this is really one of her trademarks. It's how she moves, her own style. retired after the 1992 Olympics. She took a couple of years off, launched a comeback in 1995, moved to Houston, and has been training with Bella Caroli ever since. 
And I'll tell you, she looks better than she did in Atlanta. She really does. Beautiful cross-berry cast. And now, Shetlana's going to be performing with the Anti-Gravity Gymnastics Dance Company. So something new on her plate because she's such a great performer. Here's her roundoff, whip through, back handspring, double tuck. Good tumbling pass, but really gets that credit on her dance, too. The final is just another double tuck, but she fulfills all of her requirements and just really gets the crowd on her side, too. She's going to score well here. And the score for Boganskaya, 9.90, so a very consistent first day for Svetlana Boganskaya. And she moves into the lead with that 9-9. Here's Shannon Miller. She needs a perfect 10 here to tie Boganskaya for the lead. And we know that's possible. She did it last week in Portland. Phantom of the Opera. Nice double pike. You know, we talked about Bogan Skaya's longevity. How about Shannon Miller? 1995, people thought she was washed up. She finished 12th in the all-around at the World Championship. She was troubled by injuries and a growth spurt. But she turned it all around and used it as a positive. Did she go from four foot six inches tall in Barcelona to five one? It's quite a quite a jump. It is, but I think her gymnastics matured as well, and you can see it in the style of her dance and the way that she moves as well. A little bit more of a, of a, of a mature look too. are really breaking new ground, performing very impressive technical skills almost a year after the Olympics. Yeah, you know, she's going to be mad at herself for that step out of bounds. Pass. See all the speed you need to get down a diagonal, pull in, back out, kind of a tuck, kind of a pike, but she over-rotated, took a huge step off the floor. Here's another back tumbling pass, her double pike. Well, it's important to realize, though, that she's sitting fairly comfortably in the top six, so she shouldn't have too much trouble moving on to the next day of competition. And Miller scores a 9.70. Coming up, Dominique Mochianu tries to hang in in the top six when we come back. Here's Dominique Dawes. She won the bronze medal in Atlanta on the floor. One of the most entertaining floor performers. Step forward, but that doesn't 
stop coming, he's been coming more and more. Oh. We uh, mentioned earlier that Dominique is appearing on Broadway in Greece, and she's not our only Broadway star, Wendy Hilliard, appearing in Candide. But I won't be doing a, a double pull, but the show's a lot of fun. safe in this routine. Normally she would do some of her tumbling passes where she'd do punch fronts and continue on, maybe do two passes right in a row. I think she knows what it's going to take for her to move on to the semifinals and just might as well do a good job and get a good score. Two more rotations tomorrow for all eight gymnasts. The top six will advance to that semifinal round on beam. Dominique's parents got her started in gymnastics because they were uh, tired of seeing her slip and tumble all around the house and the furniture. Thought that if she went to a real gym, it would burn up some energy. Little did they know what it would lead to. Final pass, tight double. Here's her first pass. It's a full and pike. She really worked a lot of it in warm-up and did it just fine, but here maybe she was just a little bit too tired or something, just didn't pull it around. And here's her final pass. She's gonna do a double back in a pike position. And she just over it just a touch, just a little step there. The score Dawes. And Dawes scores a 9.70. Now on the floor, Dominique Mochianu. She's in sixth place after three rotations. Dominique can be a very impressive and explosive floor performer. But she knows she's going to have to really hit here. She starts with a beautiful first pass. Tumbling through a little over rotated that last pass. You might say that gymnastics is in Dominique's blood. Her parents, Camelia and Dimitri, were both Romanian gymnasts. And she's got a younger sister, seven-year-old Christina, who's also training at a very high level. for the upcoming competitions because all of the extra dance moves and the combinations have to be in the routine to achieve full requirements. requirements for this meet and she's got a good score here. Dominique Mochianu, she burst onto the scene when she was just 13 years old. Stunned the gymnastics world to become the youngest national champion in history. Now this is a unique combination of tumbling here. Front to back, she does a front handspring one and a half twist, and then she steps into a back step out layout. She doesn't stop tumbling there. She goes back, round off back handspring, double two and a half twist it's supposed to be. She really didn't quite make it, but it's a good combination of twisting. And for the 15 year old, it's a 9.80 on the floor. Now on the floor, 
here is Elena Piscoon. Currently in fifth place. rotation have not been particularly high. Boganskaya with the best mark on the floor of a 9-9. pass, not too difficult. Elena, Elena doesn't get to train on a full-size floor exercise mat all the time because the gym in her hometown isn't big enough to have one. <laughs> really a nice first tumbling pass. If the layout was two and a half twists, takes that backward momentum into forward momentum for that punch front layout. Very difficult. And the score for Elena Piscoon with a 9.775. Still to come, we'll see if Amanda Borden can pick up any ground in her final competition of the day. Women's Professional Gymnastics Championship with two competitors left on floor. Here's Alona Poliskova. Russian folk tune, very apropos. Wow, two and a half twist punch front, but she stepped out. She landed out of bounds, didn't even touch the border of the floor. Now this is a 40 by 40 floor area. The blue border designates where the out of bounds is. heading into the floor exercise. She needed to pick up some ground to try to get into the top six, but stepping out of bounds was an untimely mistake. Here in this tumbling series, back handspring through to a two and a half punch, and she did. She just landed way off the floor exercise. Slowly stepped back on. Her last pass, she finishes with a handspring Front layout full, pike front. Difficult front tumbling sequence. Gives your extra bonus points. And the judges give Polaskova 9.65. 9.65. Up 
up on the floor, Amanda Borden. to move on to the next round. And she will have two more rotations to try and catch up tomorrow. Whenever you mention the 96 Olympics to any of these gymnasts, they light up like Christmas trees. But one of the things Amanda said is that she was so happy that the 96 Games improved the image of the sport. She felt like the country saw happy, healthy athletes. And it's true, it's such an important year for the, especially the female gymnasts, but also competitions like this, where you see the athletes beyond their Olympic year still doing great gymnastics. Let's also look at the effect it has on the young kids that are watching her here in the arena, because um, they really idolize these girls. Mochianu for sixth place with that performance, but once again, she does have two more chances tomorrow. And here's Amanda's first pass. Round off with back. Two back hands, or one back handspring, takes it up for a tough double. One step back. Solid, solid first pass. This is the second pass of her routine. It's a round off back handspring double tuck and almost goes out of bounds, but stays right on. And Amanda Borden closes out the day with a 9.70. And with that score, she will remain in eighth place. So here are the standings after the first day of competition. Svetlana Boganskaya and Amy Chow stay up on top. Once again, the gymnasts will have two more rotations tomorrow to solidify a top six spot. Only the top six gymnasts will advance to the semifinals. A reminder, you can see the conclusion of this competition tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern time. Let's check in one more time with Michelle Tafoya. She's with the leader. With Svetlana Boganskaya, your day started with a 10 on the vault. It was solid all the way through. How were you able to put together such a complete performance? Well, I just was concentrating on my routines, and I just was wanted to do my best, actually. As you go into the second day of competition, how much do you think your experience is going to play a part in how well you do? I'm trying to don't think about the second day, you know, like, my goal is take uh, one step, step at a time, so it's what I'm doing now. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. And a reminder, golf is good for experience.